Hi, my name is Shane Kaufman, and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about uh, PCB import and the EM verification flow in the AWR design environment. Um, in V13 of the AWR design environment release, um, we added the capability to import um, PCB files, specifically ODB++ and IPC2581. And in V14, uh, we've had a focus on simplifying the boards that come into the software and making it really easy for users to EM simulate sections of their boards uh, for EM verification. So quickly going to run through and look at the PCB import wizard. Um, hopefully everyone has seen this, but if not, um, you know, you have this drop down here for selecting what type of file you would like to import, what board, what board type you would like to import. Uh, here you can see we have uh, 3DI, IPC2581, and ODB++. Uh, so here we have the file that we've imported for this particular project. The layers that are uh, specified in the, the board file um, are all here, so you can select uh, which layers are important to import into the environment. Also, um, the nets that are listed in the file, and of course, all of the stack up information, including you know, material definitions, conductivity, dielectric constants, lost ends, those types of things. Um, so I've already imported this board. I just wanted to show off the wizard a little bit, little bit. So I'm going to go open the layout of this board. And um, this is a, a Zookin board that uh, they have graciously shared with us. And uh, for this particular example, the region of interest that the designer might want to EM simulate is up in the upper right hand section here. And it's uh, specifically these traces here. Um, so in V14, um, what we've added is this uh, PCB EM setup wizard. So I'm going to run that, and uh, there's a lot of pins here. So um, rather than going and manually selecting them, I'm going to—I've saved them previously. I'm going to click this restore button, um, and you can see it's highlighted all of the PCB component pins um, that are attached to the traces that I want to analyze, and then. We have the Smart Select button, and this Smart Select button, if I press it, you can see that it selected all of the nets from the component pins to the other component pins that were selected. Um, this particular board doesn't have any SMT components on it, but if uh, you had series components uh, in these traces, um, this Smart Select button will actually propagate through the series components and continue on the trace selection until it meets another, uh, meets another pin. Um, it's not just two port components that this uh, smart select button will actually propagate the selection through. Um, it's actually a user settable setting. Um, so four component uh, pins, six component pins. What we found um, in, in why this is a user settable setting instead of doing all of them is that often if you have a very large uh, surface mount component, let's see, 16, 24, 32, 40 pins, something like that, um, if when, you hit, when you want to propagate through all of those pins that aren't uh, ground or power nets, um, you kind of wind up selecting the entire board. So based on the user's design, they can set the max pin count that makes sense for the selection of the board that they're trying to get and what type of components they're using. Um, so now we've got our, our net selected, um, and so we kind of have sort of a region of uh, defined here that we might want to simulate. So I'm going to click the Setup EM Dock button here. This is just a dialog, um, you know, telling you, hey, we're going to enable all of the layers here so that we make sure we copy over all of the layers of the board to EM. If this isn't something you'd like to do, um, of course, click no, and then it'll only copy over the layers that you have visible, the layers that, you know, you've said that you want to, to send over to EM. Um, and that gives us this boundary. And what this boundary is, is um, the area in which of the board that we want to kind of cut out and send over to uh, for EM simulation. A couple of different options, you know, a bounding box, a bounding polygon, just an outline of the shapes. So, you know, if you wanted a larger area, smaller area, it's really controllable. The user can set what type of area they would like to cut out and send to EM. Uh, I'm just, I like this. I'm going to send this over to the EM structure. Um, I guess before uh, we move on and click OK here, I want to point out um, my that, well, I guess it's not going to let me do that. Um, we'll go ahead and send it to EM and then we'll come back. Um, so it's kind of about this dialogue anyway. So this is a simplification dialogue that um, PC PCB is very uh, complicated. There's a lot of shapes. Uh, meshes can be um, 
quite complicated. Traces are typically rounded, vias are typ typically cir circular, and those don't necessarily perform the best in uh, EM simulators. So why don't we uh, you know, keep it electrically the same, but simplify the geometry, simplify the mesh so that you can get results faster. So I think it'll allow me to do it now. I'm gonna zoom in to the vias here. Um, notice the via is circular, and then I'm gonna zoom in to the trace edges here. Um, we can see, I'll zoom in a, a little bit further, and you can see that the, the trace is rounded. And what this um, dialog is doing from the EM setup wizard, it's actually analyzed the geometry of the PCB board and um, filled out these parameters for you for which it thinks will be an op optimal uh, simplification of the geometry for EM. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and uh, we'll take a look at you know what it did. And while I'm talking here, it's actually doing the simplification, and now we have an EM structure that is simplified. And uh, you'll also notice that all of the component pins um, that we had selected previously, ports were applied to. And these are a new type of port. They're not an edge port. They're uh, what we call a PCB pin port. Um, and they're actually placing themselves in the center of the component pins and at these uh, lower frequencies um, where the wavelengths are a little longer, these uh, ports are, are really easy to place and they're uh, extremely accurate. For, for this particular example, it doesn't matter so much because there's only 29 ports because it's cut out a small section of the board, but often you might be simulating a couple hundred or a few hundred ports and uh, adding those manually would be quite cumbersome. So um, now jumping back to the simplification, if we take a look at the vias here, um, we'll notice it's simplified into a hexagon. And if we take a look at the edges of the trace, we'll see that it's a, it's a mitered edge or a straight edge instead of a rounded edge. And that really helps with the mesh and not having unnecessary uh, unknown counts. And to further show that point, I'm gonna close everything here and we're gonna, so this particular, I imported the board and, and made it to where it had the same mesh as it would have in V13. Um, so we have V13 on the left and V14 on the right. And I'm gonna mesh both of those structures. And just visually, um, it's obvious that the V14 mesh is much more simple um, in areas where you have a ground plane on the top, you're not noticing um, all of the extra mesh elements uh, that are really not necessary. Um, if you look at the unknown count of the V13 PCB mesh, you'll notice it's about 81,000 unknowns. And through um, what we call mesh mirroring, so not having mesh mirroring, disabling mesh mirroring and V14, and then also the simplification of the geometry, um, not rounding the edges of the traces, the corners of the traces, and then also simplifying the vias, we were able to get this particular structure down to about 21,700 unknowns, and that's a significant, that's going to result in a significant savings in simulation time. So the kind of the whole point here and the takeaway is that in a few minutes, we were able to import a PCB. We were able to select the area that we wanted to simulate, cut it out, simplify it for EM, add ports, and be ready for simulation in just a, in just a matter of a few minutes. So um, thank you for watching.